Alright guys, so I'm finally releasing my top secret presets that I've been using. I was recently on Tyler Stallman's podcast and I was talking about how there's some stuff that I haven't released yet and I'm not sure if I ever want to release it because they're like my bread and butter to getting like the filmic look on digital now. Someone commented saying, oh I thought that's what the presets were before. So usually how I make my presets is as I'm developing and, and creating new looks and trying to always mature my eye and the, the look of my work, I'm constantly making myself presets and I'm using them for a good amount of time and then when I get Get bored or I start wanting to spice it up I make new ones so these presets aren't actually presets they're curve adjustments they're like curve presets because I've been trying to go for more of a filmic cleaner look not filmic how everyone says oh this looks filmic till and orange kind of shit this is like actually like I've been shooting a lot more film and film has pretty accurate colors but it has uh, the contrast is what really gives you that look so we'll go over some outdoor photos and some indoor photos. So look, look, this is straight out camera right here. Nothing on it. So I lit this again. This is all in this messy ass apartment. So you see film curve one, film curve two. See some of them do kind of tone a little bit, which you have to go in and adjust the white balance for how you want it. So you see there's a little more toning there. So there's some options. This is the one I use the most. This one, sometimes this one, if I want a more faded look, and this one. I don't know about you guys, uh, but that kind of looks like film to me and I could kind of prove it. So here's some actual film straight from the lab, no uh, editing. And then this is after I edit the film. Yes, I edit film. And you can see we have like these milky highlights. Uh, the shadows kind of roll off really nicely and there's not much toning going on. Like films are actually pretty like color accurate. Well, most of them, well, Kodak Portra is pretty color accurate. So usually with my film, I'll go down and I just crunch the brightness down because I usually overexpose. And you see the highlights, how the highlights just have that beautiful pop to them. It's on the highlights. You see the highlights are getting pushed way up, but they're still there. There's still contrast there while there's still dynamic range in the shadows. That's what film like freaking uh, rules at is giving you all this dynamic range while still giving you a contrasty image, which is so hard to do on digital without making it look like HDR. Uh, so let's go back again. So you see straight out of camera, let's do this one. So from here, I'm just gonna go lower my brightness. I'm gonna go fix my white balance. From there, I'm gonna go through my color wheels and I'm just gonna add some tones in it. And there you go. Let's go back and reset my curves. And you see how much that does. It gives you that highlight roll off that film has. This is digital. This was shot on the GFX 50 S2, the, the new Fujifilm uh, medium format camera. I will click reset. You see, that's what it looks like straight from the camera. I think I had it on classic NAG, so I'm just gonna go put it on film standard. Uh, actually, we could do Provia standard because I'm sure that's what most people are gonna be using. Let's go fix our white balance real quick. Now let's go to my curves. And you can see, this is what they all do. Either using these bottom three mostly, or the top one. When I use these, it's because I go through each curve adjustment for a photo, and sometimes those, those middle curves will just like work perfectly for the photo, and that's when I'll use those. But usually I want as much control as possible, so I will use uh, one of these ones. Uh, so we could do this more faded one. From there, I'm just gonna go and lower my brightness down again. Fix my white balance a little bit. So let's go and reset the curve just so you can see what it's doing. So that's it straight out of camera. It looks really digital. Throw that curve on there. Kind of give a filmic look. Obviously, I would have to go and like retouch and everything. Uh, and then again, let's just go throw on a standard looking grade on this. And I shot film on this one too. So let's go and look at the film. So this is from a lab that I was going to. They're a great lab, but the shadows are always kind of messed up from there. So this is how I usually go and just fix my blacks from that lab. And there you go. So again, you can see how those highlights roll off, like the highlights on her cheeks. They're not being peaked or blown out. They just have this nice roundness to it. And again, let's go back to our other one. So you see, we could just, uh, let me fix that white bounce a little bit real quick. You can see we go and take off that curve adjustment and it has that digital look, put it back on, has that filmic milky look. All right, so now we have this photo of Olivia, this straight off camera, no edit on it. And I do have film from this shoot too, I think. Uh, we'll find out. So you see these these middle ones actually work really freaking great on this. I like how two kind of increase the dynamic range, but let's do, let's do number uh, four. Let's do four there. Uh, from there, I don't like how the greens are kind of like mustardy looking. So I'm gonna go to my greens. I'm gonna shift those over. I'm gonna go to my yellows, lower the saturation a little bit. I'm gonna go to my blues, push those a little bit till, kind of lower them, lower the saturation on them. So there you go, this is straight out of camera. This is with the film curve with that really quick edit. I can go and reset the curve, 
and you see what it does. It's a little more subtle on this one, but it still takes it to that next notch. Now let's go look at the film shot from this. So this is the, the shot straight from the lab. Uh, again, it's kind of like washed out a little bit. We can lower the brightness. And you see, we're getting that filmic looking highlight up there. I could go and put on the same kind of like try to make it a little similar that I guess uh, you see the blues, the hues are a little more similar. It's what film does. It combines hues and it doesn't capture trillions of colors like freaking digital does. Let's just go back again and look at the other photo. You can see this, the digital, the camera is pretty great at kind of getting like a Kodak look, in my opinion, uh, versus every other camera that's out there. But you see with that film curve, it just takes it to the next notch up there. Just for uh, uh, fun, let's see what the ones that I usually use on here. Let's do the last one on there. And that's a pretty freaking sick look. Let's uh, cool it down a little bit. So again, this is the original, that's what the film curve sell. So. And uh, yeah, that's it guys. I was really contemplating if I should release these or not because this is really kind of, uh, it's what's been giving my digital work the film look. And so I didn't want to release it because I have competition out there and I don't want people calling my editing style and I'm sure some of them are watching. So yeah, there they are, now you can have it. Um, but yeah guys, uh, let me know how they work for you. Uh, again, they should work on every camera make. So uh, yeah, peace.